So let's talk about four of the most competitive space marine units that most top lists tend to take in serious amounts. Your damage dealers might be the ones going out to destroy the enemy army, but these guys might be the ones delivering victory, rustling you up victory points all game long. Hello and welcome back to Warspace Tactics, where today we're talking Space Marines once more, and in this video I thought we'd talk about four top tier competitive units that are present in a lot of Space Marine lists, and roughly how I think about using them in game right now. I'm often kind of wary about calling things auto include in Warhammer 40k. Obviously, people's armies and playstyles vary really quite a bit, though usually I'd say in 10th edition, the core playstyle of an army and the detachment generally might be what determines your main damage dealing strategy for a faction. Say, maybe delivering fire discipline aggressors in Gladius, or loads of vehicles in Ironstorm, or loads of Thunderwolves in a Space Wolf Stormlance. But regardless of what your main strategy to deal with the enemy's army is, the same sort of units usually tend to always be quite good at scoring points for the faction, and these seem to be just remarkably consistent across a whole load of Space Marine lists, as they're not really caring too much about the main advantages or disadvantages of the detachment, they just want to be left alone with minimal investment and score you victory points in one way or another. Just to take a look at just how prevalent these guys are, I did a quick review of 10 top performing Space Marine army lists at tournaments, winning 4 games out of 5 or better and every one of the big 4 scoring units that we're about to talk about appeared in around 2 thirds of the army list, 6 or 7 out of 10. I must admit that's kind of surprising prevalence for any unit in the faction, let alone a whole cluster of 4 different scoring things, and it really implies that they're very good indeed. Maybe no one of them is truly auto include, but some combination of them to score you victory points pretty much is. The same things really do come up quite a lot. Jumping into the units themselves though, and first up, I thought we'd start with perhaps the most unlikely one, at least to some people's minds, and that's the Combi Weapon Lieutenant, 70 points for one character from the Leviathan box set, and he's the lone operative lieutenant who operates on his own, and has some sneaky mobility tricks to keep alive. I feel like for quite a few people just reading the base datasheet, it probably won't be very exciting, given that his main disadvantage is that he doesn't really do any meaningful damage output, can only do a little bit against lighter infantry models. But like several of the rest of these, the damage output isn't the important bit, it's his utility, plus in his case, his special rule. A huge portion of his value comes from marking one objective in the midboard for army-wide reroll ones to wound against that target. Really quite a nice advantage given that the Oath of Moment wound rolls went away. The opponent is going to need to stand on objectives to score points in the game, so this is basically going to be free damage against ones on one certain objective point. Provided he's alive, that's going to be a lot of extra damage given to your army. If you saw that making up a chunk of his 70 point value, then for the rest of it, he's just a very annoying lone operative character who's hard to kill. Generally a very important thing in competitive lists, as it's pretty awesome to have the insurance that he can't just be shot down at long range. It means that if he was on a primary point, you could guarantee that he couldn't just be shot down off it unless the opponent can get some units nice and close. And he can infiltrate if desired to start maybe a little bit more annoyingly up in the midfield, being in range of early game primaries or maybe mid-board secondaries that might be out of reach for some of your other units early in the game. Then all the rest of his special rules are generally geared to him surviving quite well. He gets a reactive move of 6 inches whenever the enemy moves within 9 inches of him. That means it's going to be very hard to catch in combat specifically. And if he's somewhere near an objective, it might be tricky for the opponent not to trigger that move, so he could maybe run away or hide. Even if he could manage to land a unit just within, just outside 9 inches but within 12 to shoot him, he's still got stealth and a 5 plus feel no pain, so it's more annoying to kill than most. War gear wise he doesn't actually have any equipment options, though I have seen occasionally people use durability relics such as the armour indomitus if they didn't have anything else to spend the points on, or could be a good choice for enhancements that don't actually involve buffing a unit in some way. His rules do combo quite well with things like Lionel Johnson or Abute Gilliman, where he's a lone operative that can trigger their own lone operative style rules to basically make sure that they can't be targeted at a side of 12 inches, which is pretty brutal. And it's maybe particularly nice to have if you have whirlwinds in the army, you can mark an objective and then guarantee that you can get some fairly strong firepower on them. With a target marked with both Oath of Moment and the Lieutenant's debuff, they're going to be very easy to kill, and whirlwinds might be pretty nasty against them. For how to think about playing him, ideally I think I'd want to mark one of the objectives in the midfield, and maybe one of the ones where your main thrust of attack isn't necessarily going towards, ones where the opponent's likely to have a fairly strong board presence and make their units easier to kill there. Given the choice, I'd rather select a target that you're actually going to be able to get line of sight to the enemy units, you don't really want to be marking a target and then them just hiding behind a ruin or something, and hopefully over the course of a few turns that should be able to yield you enough damage to have made him kind of worth it already. 
Then for his lone operative shenanigans, I'd be tempted to put him somewhere in the midfield, but maybe not too aggressively. Maybe enough to threaten to move on an objective if it made sense to, and if he might be safe there. But have the option just to hang around for a bit and commit a bit later game, as you want to get a turn or two out of his damage boost at least, I'd say. I think he, more than just about anything else, will be really quite nice to try and keep somewhere near to some terrain pieces, like some line of sight blocking ruins. Somewhere where it's going to be difficult to get line of sight within 12 inches for him without triggering his reactive move, and hopefully keeping him annoying and safe for yet another turn. Overall, he seems to be cropping up in greater than 50% of competitive Space Marine lists between his annoying lone operative shenanigans and the damage boost on a key point. Next up, for some very heavily played Space Marine objective scorers are the Scout Squads. These guys do seem to have points costs that are really quite pushed, 55 points for 5 guys, a very small investment compared with just about any other Space Marine unit out there, but per point invested they've actually got some pretty decent damage and defensive stats, never mind being an infiltrating unit and having the option to redeploy. For their main advantages, their 10 wounds at toughness 4 with a 4 plus save, which is very good durability for 55 points I think. The damage output isn't too bad, I'd probably be most tempted to go with a missile launcher, the sniper rifle, a chainsaw on the sergeant and at least one shotgun to allow them to advance and do the action type things that require you to be able to shoot. Not going to be super efficient against any one target, but all that's perhaps a surprising amount of random attacks for a 55 point squad. Then they've got both infiltrate and scout. Infiltrate's excellent with such a cheap unit as it basically means that you can just screen out areas of the board and not worry too much if you lose these guys. And scout on top of that means that you can get an extra burst of repositioning even after you've seen your opponent's forces. Potentially moving up to go aggressive if it should make sense to deal some damage for some reason. Or just making sure that your unit's completely safe and maybe out of line of sight behind a ruin if that's possible. Finally they've got one of those rules that allows you to return to reserve at the end of the opponent's turn. I feel like that might not always make sense to use as quite a lot of their value is where they can set up in the first place. But it's definitely a handy one to have the option to do on the table, means they could jump round to the opponent's deployment zone in the later stages of the game, or be ready to come out of strategic reserve to do something like a secondary objective, maybe one of the ones in the corners of the board, or again in the opponent's drop zone. Between all that I feel like a unit of scouts is almost never going to be a bad choice in the army. In general my default plan for these guys would be to have them start on a midfield objective and ideally hidden if possible. You can get some objective control points there early, it should mean that your opponent needs to be kind of brave and move some of their units out to take them out and hopefully expose them to counter attacks from your army, it could be a nice trading unit there. And just having units start up the board is pretty handy for early game board positioning secondaries, things where you need to hold the midfield or potentially get into the opponent's half like engage on all fronts. Then from there they could be used really differently depending on what opponent that you're playing and what makes most sense. If they have some very fragile light infantry that could deal a lot of damage, their damage output could genuinely be the best use of them and they could scout forward and go aggressive if you get first turn. Or for a heavy deep strike army they could help with deep strike screening potentially. Or if you can safely hold that objective with something else they could return to reserve fairly early and threaten to pop up somewhere inopportune for the opponent. Overall just an all round good unit, surprisingly good for the damage and defence for the cost, cheap and expendable, and definitely have a lot of options for how you can play them depending on the matchup. Next up, and perhaps the absolute kings of secondary objective scoring, are the Inceptors. Definitely a bit more of an investment than the first two at 110 points for three guys here, but very few other units in the game are quite as consistent just for scoring secondary points if you need to due to their kind of godly rule where they can drop down anywhere that's greater than 3 inches from your opponent's army. It means they're very hard to screen for some forces and near impossible for others. You're going to be able to near guarantee to get their damage where it needs to be. You almost certainly have somewhere to drop in the opponent's deployment zone to get objectives like behind enemy lines or deploying teleport homers. And even if they don't have to do actions and things, their damage output is still fairly solid. Both the plasma exterminators and the assault bolters are genuinely quite good for their cost. The plasma exterminators will do better against three wound infantry and vehicles and things, whereas the assault bolters are solidly ahead against things like standard space marines. There doesn't seem to be any enormous consensus with one loadout getting taken a lot more in competitive lists. Some detachments might help them out with their damage output as well. The firestorm force getting an extra pip of strength and the threat to get plus one to wound is quite nice, and the plasma version might quite like the iron storm assault force. Getting to reroll one of the hit rolls with those fairly powerful attacks is nice. If you're interested, here's just a damage breakdown of the bolters versus the plasma against a few key targets. Generally, plasma wins big against terminators and any vehicle that's toughness 10 or greater. 
This old bolters are solidly ahead against termagants and space marines, and are kind of even against light vehicles like a rhino tank. As a result, and mainly due to their fairly godly deep strike drop, inceptors are just a very common pick in competitive lists these days. Typically you'd want to put them in reserve, as a big part of their value is dropping outside of 3 inches, and then ideally you'd want at least some on standby for certain secondary objectives that you might draw, things to drop in the enemy backfield, or other hard to reach positioning things where you could just throw inceptors at it and pretty much guarantee you points. Even if you don't draw one of the relevant cards at the time though, they still do have plenty of options, occasionally you might have the opportunity to just take away an enemy primary objective by dropping them on it, if the opponent's towards the edge of the objective then that 3 inch range could have them still land within range of it, there's at least a reasonable chance that you could destroy an enemy unit and replace it with one of yours, which is pretty excellent for scoring the primary. Otherwise just having a pinpoint unit pop up and absolutely go to town on one enemy unit that should by all rights be safe is really powerful. You might be able to just assassinate something like a lone operative that might have been hard to get your hands on, or take a big chunk out of some fragile damage dealers that thought they were safe behind terrain. I think if you're trying to use them for damage output, the ideal would be to drop them somewhere where they're also going to be hidden for the next turn, so it's going to cause your opponents at least some trouble to try and move their units around to get lines of sight on them. As while their damage output's quite good, their defence isn't really all that spectacular, things like anti-tank weapons or damage 3 will kill them very, very quickly. Finally moving on we have the Infiltrators, 100 points for a squad of 5 guys here, and these guys do seem to be one of the most popular space marine objective scoring units around, far more commonly taken than things Games Workshop might more envisage for the role, like Intercessors or Heavy Intercessors perhaps, and even if they don't have the objective control that those guys do, they more than make up for it with their big 12 inch deep strike denial rule, which in the right matchup can be absolutely massive, and can shut down a lot of the enemy's worst shenanigans. Otherwise, they can infiltrate, as their name might just about suggest, really. It means that if you don't need to guard your home field objective like that, they can start in the midfield and maybe just act a bit more of a screening type unit that's at least fairly durable, as their Helix Gauntlet gives them a 6 plus feel no pain, making them a little bit more sturdy than your average Space Marine. They do have access to the smoke keyword as well, so more more durability stratagem than a few of the other Space Marines might have with Armour of Contempt. And if you did happen to use command points on them, then you've got the chance to farm a command point with the comms array. I feel like with the space ring combos that you can do, I do see quite a lot of people trying to make them work in some way as damage dealers, but I really wouldn't bother with that. For 100 points, their damage output is truly quite dreadful, besides against trying to plink off a few enemy light infantry, and even for that role, there's much better things out there. I'd aim to just take these in small numbers of 5. They do basically get their war gear for free, but perhaps the biggest supporting choice for the units might be whether or not to take a Phobos Librarian along. I'd rate him as a lot more of a niche pick, but some people do quite like him. He does work pretty well with the Infiltrator's core rule, in that he gives the squad sort of like the lone operative rule, meaning that they can't be shot at greater than 12 inches range. Between that, then you get an 170 point unit that both can deny deep strike to 12 inches, and also not be shot outside of 12 inches, so pretty much godly presence on objectives there, your opponent just literally can't do anything about them unless they can get a unit close by. Using them in game, I'd say that most of the time for their points cost, they absolutely want to be guarding either a home field or a midfield objective, though how important the deep strike denial thing is definitely going to depend on the opponent and what options they have there. It's definitely going to be a big deal against certain armies, say Chaos Demons and Gene Stiller Colts or Grey Knights. In those kind of matchups, these guys are going to cause some problems for them. Starting in the midfield maybe feels like the obvious choice, given that they can infiltrate, I feel like they're absolutely fine for that. They might just run the risk a little bit of basically being taken out by enemies early in the game that just move physically up to them, and if possible I think they'd want to be on an objective that's a bit further from the main bulk of the enemy attack. If they can just sit and guard on a far-flung objective in the midfield the entire game long, then they'd certainly be kind of happy with that. Otherwise though, you could just completely forget about infiltrating, sit them on the home field objective and just know that objective isn't going to be immediately taken by things coming out of deep strike. In some matchups that's going to be kind of key and would allow a lot of the best of the army to go off and do its thing and get stuck into the enemy. Most of the time I probably wouldn't bother with trying to make too much use of their bolters unless it's going to be seriously useful against enemy light infantry. Likely just hiding out a line of sight if the opponent does have good guns that could remove them, they could look to bully some light infantry if it made sense. Overall, between that little lot, Space Marines really do have a lot of powerful options for taking objectives and getting the edge on the victory point scoring game over the opponent, while the core portion of the army just does what it does and goes forward to destroy things. I feel like all of those units are pretty great in their own way, Inceptors, Scouts, Infiltrators and the Combi Lieutenant, though it's not like there's not other options existing for skirmishing around primaries and secondaries, 
Eliminators, the Calidus Assassin, and maybe the Jump Intercessors, as also considered in a similar sort of scope. They're quite handy units that can often get where they need to for doing secondaries a bit earlier, as well as providing some threat each in their own way. For these style units, I'd probably not go too overboard on them. The majority of army lists seem to go somewhere in around the 200-400 point mark out of a 2,000 point list. Generally, I think the consensus is that if you're going above that, then you're just eating too much into your damage and defense units, and then it might not matter if you've got loads of godly objective plays if your army's just getting wiped out. You're still probably not going to win overall unless you can take down a lot of the enemy's army as the game progresses. In general, though, if you're playing mission deck games with secondaries like this, you're probably not going to go too far wrong with including a good number of these. I think they're overall all great choices that are going to give you a better chance of winning games, even if it's not by the most traditional method of just stomping out and destroying your opponent's army with heavy firepower. In any case, let me know your thoughts on the Space Marine Objective Takers down in the comments below. Look forward to hearing all your thoughts and ideas on them, and how do you like to use these units in game yourselves? If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics, while certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming. I do tend to post new videos just about every day. We'll certainly have lots more for the Space Marines in the future. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that All Specs Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and that's the main thing that allows me to keep these videos coming quite so regularly, so if you are enjoying a lot, any support is enormously appreciated. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.